Hey, welcome to the Virtually Speaking podcast series on exploring VMware Cloud Foundation inside the private cloud. We've been covering all the components and all the add-ons of VMware Cloud Foundation, and on this episode, we're going to focus on compute. Uh, joining the conversation, John, is our good friend from product marketing, Mr. Hamanshi Singh. Hamanshi, welcome back. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah, man, good to see you. Good to see you. So, you know, we say compute, but I think most people in in the world of VMware understand that to be vSphere. That's right. Uh, but I think vSphere in itself is uh, there's it's changed a little bit. I mean, the, the 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 technology is the same, but the way it's being consumed is definitely different with all of the new changes with Broadcom. So. Why don't we start before we dive too much into vSphere itself? Like, how are people consuming it now? What are the different ways? Yeah, so, I mean, as part of the acquisition and post acquisition, there's been so many changes in terms of how vSphere is now available to our customer. That's important to kind of talk about that a little bit. Um, so, previously, you had so many different flavors of vSphere, different bundles that were available, um, and we actually simplified a lot of that, right? But at the same time, we are very much aware that there are specific customers with specific needs. Um, and we want to make sure that we are not uh, missing out any key, you know, use cases, et cetera, right? So for specifically for vSphere, there's actually multiple editions of vSphere that are available to our customers. Um, unlike any of the other, you know, components that we have as part of VCF, right? If you look at vSAN or NSX, et cetera, that's not the case. With vSphere specifically, we've got three editions uh, of vSphere and then kind of two key go-to markets, right? So VCF obviously being the top end. So I'll start from the bottom and then we'll go up, right? So first off, we've got vSphere Essentials Plus Kit. This has been around from before, some changes in terms of how it's packaged, but the core idea is still the same. The Essentials Kit is basically for the you know super low end of use cases where you're looking to basically go from like physical to virtual. It's a three server kind of a limit essentially. So if you have a you know, super small environment, you're looking for some basic virtualization benefits, we've got you covered there as well, right? Uh, next up as we go uh, is vSphere Standard. So a variety of our customers across different um, segments use vSphere standard today based on like what we, what they have. And we wanted to make sure that as we transition from the perpetual license model to subscription, et cetera, that it is still available to them for that particular use case, right? So I would say kind of core, uh, you know, consolidation use case and those kind of things. It makes sense to, uh, you know, continue with vSphere standard as well, right? Now, so that's kind of the, at, both at the lower end uh, of use cases. The two kind of main ones that you want to talk about, of course, is one, vSphere as part of VCF, right, as VCF compute, which essentially is what was previously known as vSphere Enterprise Plus, right? And then in addition to all this, we introduced a net new edition of vSphere called vSphere Foundation uh, back in December 2023 timeframe. And uh, vSphere Foundation is... Uh, I mean, if if there are folks who have, uh, you remember vSOM from back in the day, oh, yeah. uh, you know, vSphere with operations management, we had vSphere, what was it called? VROI, like we realize operations insight, stuff like that. So some of those capabilities are coming together and that's kind of what vSphere Foundation is about, wherein uh, we take vSphere Enterprise Plus and then it's, it's uh, uh, you know, the, the VCF operations capabilities kind of in there, some of the log capabilities in there that uh, again, goes for, most of our commercial segment customers. So if I'm if I'm scaling up, so I start with my three hosts with Essentials Plus. You know, I've got my 96 scores, or maybe twice that with two of those packs. I go a little bit bigger. I might look at standard. Once I get you know some half to the environment, I've started to using pretty decent amount of VMs and RAM. You know, I'm going to want that DRS. I'm going to want those capabilities that Foundation has, and also I'm going to want to optimize and see what's in that. So I've got the operations tooling to layer on top of that. You know, look at get the logs, figure out what's going on in the environment you know, be able to manage that more holistically. That's kind of my transition path. Right, yeah. And then of course, if you want, if you're looking at a full, you know, full stack, private cloud, you go to VCF and you get still get all those benefits of vSphere kind of as the foundational engine of what, you know, makes it tick. Yeah, and of course, with VMware Cloud Foundation, vSphere works with all of the other components, vSAN and NSX and all that. But if we're just talking about vSphere, is there feature parity between the vSphere inside of vSphere Foundation and VMware Cloud Foundation or... Yeah, so here's a, here's a cool thing, right? The whole idea of bringing all these components along is so that the sum is kind of greater than the individual parts, right? And this is like very apparent when you start thinking about vSphere, uh, how it presents itself in vSphere Foundation, and then vSphere in terms of how it presents itself in VMware Cloud Foundation. I'll, I'll get that. Um, so definitely, um, you know, additional uh, integrations between components that are available in VCF 
it's easier to say VCF than VMware Cloud Foundation. Yeah, I'm going to just do that. Uh, and so the idea being that as uh, vSphere interacts with um, you know um, VCF automation, there are certain capabilities enabled. So we've talked about CCI or the cloud consumption interface in the past. And that's one key area. So this is basically about kind of leveraging your kind of core IaaS capabilities, being able to provision a variety of services from that, like VM service, storage service, et cetera. And then the, the cloud consumption interface, which is basically where uh, the VCF automation and vSphere come together, uh, that provides customers a really nice IaaS experience uh, you know, wherein they are able to have a, you know, not just the core services from uh, the infrastructure, but also the global catalog that they have access to and have a- have Get a application really, templates. And yeah, application like templates and things like that, right? So it's, it's, a, it's a lot more powerful experience overall that they would get. But if they don't have VCF, right? They, all they're able to get so as part of like VVF, VSW Foundation, um, you know, all they're able to get is something that uh, uh, is a lot more restricted, I would say. It's core IaaS capabilities, right? So you still get self-service access to some of those services. Resource like, efficiency. Resource efficiency, yeah, exactly, right? And But you don't get the full-blown experience that you get by uh, having that integration with uh, the VCF automation capability. I can I can um, optimize my SQL Server VMs and, and look at them, but if I want to automate deploying them as a full-stack application, Blueprint pattern. I'm going to want that VCF to get the full, you know, RA operations yeah, and capabilities. Yeah. And and another example of this uh, is going to be, um, you know, a Project Monterey with DPUs and and you know, we spent on DPUs that we've talked about for quite some time. And again, the way uh, what we're doing now, right now is we're enabling like network services offload. And so, well, if you don't have a network services included in your VVF, well, you're not going to get the benefit of that. Uh -huh, so all sure. the benefits of DPUs and how vSphere enables that for your environment is available to you as a VCF customer. Right? That makes perfect yeah. sense. Yeah. So, so you know, in fact, we're working on some additional things coming out of uh, uh, this in the upcoming release. So we're excited about that too, uh, but more on that, you know, later. Well, and from a tighter integration, this makes a lot of sense because historically these various overlay, you know, these add-ons that as they are now, couldn't always assume all of the features were there, so to speak, in the underlying technology. And so you'd either have duplicative work or overlapping or, well, we can do this, but not if it has this version, depending on whether you had vSphere standard, advanced, enterprise, enterprise plus. There used to be a lot of vSphere versions. Yes, yeah, for sure. We go back. Like simplifying this down, you know, you can make some assumptions about what's there and, and make sure the, the, the sum of those parts is a lot better. Yeah, exactly. So that's the thing, which is why I think, you know, if you look at from a, from that journey perspective that you're talking about, like depending on your environment, you know, kind of what makes sense for you, et cetera, et cetera, going, going up the ladder and then uh, looking at your overall use cases and how individual components come together to deliver the value that you really need. Yeah, that was actually what I was going to say. So it makes sense like DPU would be a perfect example of a use case where you decide which version you need to use and, and that would be VMware Cloud Foundation. Uh, are there any other use cases that are common that we can uh, that we can discuss here? So there's a variety of things uh, when it comes to kind of core vSphere itself, right? There is, um, if you think about you know, you know how we deliver value to customers just as an individual component by itself, it's kind of four key areas. Right? One is around operational efficiency and how vSphere. Again, this is not your you know your dad's vSphere anymore. So much evolution that has happened over time and all that stuff. And so there's things like uh, you know RDU reduced downtime upgrades, for example. There's uh, you know lots of work happening in terms of how ESXi patching is significantly faster and all that stuff. We're trying to get to like rebootless and all that as well. Again, more on that later. Uh, so there's a, there's a bunch of this like, you know interesting stuff from an operational efficiency perspective that kind of vSphere delivers. You know uh, at, whether it is a part of vSphere Foundation or if it is part of VCF uh, essentially, right? Um, another key area is around um, supercharging the performance of your workloads, and this is where you know you, we talk about how we have support for DPUs as well as GPUs, right? So that entire AI ML use case that you know that opens up VCF and then kind of like the private AI foundation on top of VCF, all that gets enabled through the the support that we have for you know the uh, NVIDIA GPUs and those kind of things. And you know uh, I think in, in another episode we can talk more about uh, some of that stuff as well. So that's another kind of big area in terms of giving the performance that the workloads really uh, need. Um, another big one I would say is security, right? So um, there's a, a lot of kind of inbuilt capabilities, you know, that vSphere delivers really. Uh, and again, we can 
we can have Bob come over, you know, Bob Plankers and spend like five hours talking about all that stuff. But, um, you know, so I'll skip that. But, but again, like fundamentally delivering the compute platform or the compute engine that powers the overall platform rather, you know, having the, you know, security enabled by default, having these key capabilities, giving you, I don't know, things like multi-factor authentication, giving you lots of options when it comes to, uh, you, know, uh, you know, ID providers and those kind of things. Um, having, you know, da your data encrypted at rest and in motion, for example. Lots of really, you know, uh, cool things, um, you know, new and old that come together to make sure that, especially nowadays with the security, such a big, you know, uh, a talking point uh, in all sorts of ways, it's very important that the fundamental capability, like every feature that we have, this is what I, you know, I, I'm lifting something from what Bob talks about is, every feature is a security feature, right? If it's not secure, then there's a problem, right? So ha there has to be, Got to think about every feature as a security feature. And so, so that's kind of one, one of the key area. And then the last one I would say is around modern workloads, right? So um, all the work that's been going on into v, to vSphere with the supervisor coming in, I mean, we had Project Pacific previously, which uh, basically kind of, you know, we, we embedded Kubernetes into the fabric of vSphere essentially. We uh, introduced things like uh, Tanzu Kubernetes, Grid Service, TKGS, and uh, with all that, you know, the core compute engine is a unified, uh, you know, uh, platform where you can run both VMs and containers, you know, in the same way. Yeah, I don't have to go procure and, and operationalize and deploy and secure and optimize a separate container platform. So if you think about connecting that to like, what are CIOs worried about right now? One of the things is uh, skills shortage, right? In a variety of areas. And so, especially if you're thinking about like modern workloads and all that kind of stuff, and if you're thinking about whether it is AI related, Kubernetes related, um, having you know that consistency in in the underlying platform. Not having to have a separate platform team for each of these things yeah. you just described. Those silos don't need to be there. Like that's the whole point of like you know why we are simplifying our portfolio with VCF as being kind of that ubiquitous uh, overall platform that can power your private cloud. Doesn't matter where it is, right? In, you know whatever location. So that's this all is kind of underlying and powering you know the 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 story of vcf yeah that's exciting those are great use cases perfect examples i think most vmware customers are familiar with vsphere but as you mentioned it's been around for so long that it is just getting better and better and more it, it's definitely become not your not your mama's not your dad's uh, vsphere for sure where can people go to learn more about vsphere well the easiest one is vsphere.com Right, uh, so so that's pretty easy, right? Um, so the, the thing is, you can go to vSphere.com, you can find out more about, uh, you know, uh, all the different additions and, and permutation combination we talked about, depending on use, use use cases. And then from there, you can connect into what's my what's the right path for me. There's a ton of resources we have available as well that can help you really very in a very granular way compare capabilities and 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 feature sets, etc. Cetera, et cetera, as well. Uh, and then, you know, there's uh, there's a ton of like links, et cetera, in terms of uh, webcasts, in terms of uh, just like PDF resources we have that folks can, you know, take a look at and, uh, you know, learn more about that. Absolutely. And and for the customers that are familiar to listening to Virtually Speaking, and when we get, you know, we get we get guests on like Hamanshu that work here at VMware close to the engineering teams, you can tell he's chomping at the bit to share things that he can't share just yet, uh, uh, which tells me that there's some really great features coming. So I appreciate you for not losing your job by spilling the beans too soon. And uh, I want to thank you for joining us and uh, look forward to seeing you on another episode. Oh, thank you for having me. This was fantastic. Thank you.